How about them hogs? Can they just keep climbing here in 2022 under Sam Pittman? We got uh, Ty Hudson on the line from hogville.net. Get on over there for your Arkansas football coverage. Ty, what's going on today? Yo, almost said what's up. I got to do my my uh, ceremonial yo every time I'm on this show. How you doing, Mark? We look forward to that. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm trying to get a beat on the uh, – the Razorbacks, because, man, I was looking at their schedule personnel last night because I'm unveiling my record predictions. And, you know, I've got a soft spot for certain teams across the country, only like a handful in Arkansas is in that category, because I remember the old Southwest Conference days and mm. and now in the SEC Western Division playing that brutal schedule each year. I, I just kind of root for this team to, to take um, – what's a high school playing state that's not at the level of some of their competitors across the conference and be able to elevate. And what Sam Pittman has done, you know, we've talked about it ad nauseum, uh, can't be understated in terms of elevating from whatever it was, can't win a game in the SEC to three wins that was really a good team, but three and seven was the outcome. And then boom, last year, playing with just about everybody on the schedule, including Bama, and that was remarkable so where do we go from here well we got you for some fall camp we know you got complete access full access to fall camp you're there all the time that's good to hear and you love what you're seeing out of these wide receivers it's kind of ridiculous uh like you and i were talking before we started recording uh sam Pittman has admitted it and some other folks in the media have admitted it, including all of us at, at hogville.net by the way hogville uh all caps net YouTube, we're building that bad boy up uh, from, from the ground up. A lot of fun over there. And, of course, tune in to Test Talk with Ty as well. I got a lot going on, Mark. My plate is like, it's just kind of not near overflowing like yours is. You're a busy man 24-7. But, yeah, everyone has talked about the wide receivers being the biggest question mark. I think I we've talked about this the last time I was on, but I, I added them to my red flag video. I made a red flag video on Hogville Net. And I added wide receivers as being a red flag for the Razorbacks to deal with in 2022. And I should have specified, you know, more so that they need to iron th these things out before we get ready for Cincinnati, which is around the corner now. I feel like they've done that. Now, that's in camp. But coming into this, everybody was like, this is, they're without Traylon Burks, first round draft pick who's in Tennessee, who's being treated quite, uh, pretty badly by the nashville media over there by the way i should say uh every time that guy sneezes they're tweeting about how terrible he is as a sneezer but um I, I this was this was a point of contention for a lot of fans it's split everyone down the middle oh they're gonna be fine without burks and then you've got the other side like no they're gonna be terrible without burks uh and, and it seems like the wide receivers have stepped up quite a bit matt landers again someone you and i talked about six five two oh five two oh three Apparently this dude runs like a four two nine forty. Of course I'm I'm kidding, but he is I mean, they've said it. I don't remember which player said it, but he might be in that group in the wide receiver room, the fastest player in that room. And that's crazy when you consider they've got Bryce Stevens, Isaiah Centennia, who are guys that are really fast. And you're talking about him belonging in that camp at six five, two hundred pounds, you know, um, hasn't proven a whole lot at georgia and of course he ended up transferring to toledo hasn't really proven that but he comes in he's had a great camp uh warren thompson you know my boy warren thompson you and i have always got chat about warren he's had the most consistent camp of any wide receiver in that room and he's got athletic ability and i've seen him break the ankles of these dbs throughout camp isaiah centennia has had some moments the true freshman I'm pretty sure it was Jalen Catalan who was guarding him on one-on-ones down near the uh, – they were playing like five yards out of the end zone or away from the end zone, and they're doing these like little quick routes, you know, little quick slant routes and things. And I'm pretty sure it was Catalan who he kind of – he edged out and ended up making the catch and scoring. Um, and then they do this thing called fastball where they just kind of line up and they go. You're seeing receivers make plays. It's like a different guy every day, and it's and it's also guys being consistent. Like I said, Warren Thompson being in that bunch. Jaden Hazelwood has been very – he's been vocal. He's kind of taken over as the uh, vocal captain, I think, on the offense, but definitely in that receiving – in the receiver room. And he's had a really strong camp. 
it's kind of extraordinary. They the receiver room, what they've managed to do this fall camp has changed the minds of so many people. And I'm seeing now there's other people in the media who maybe kind of did a soft prediction several months ago. They're actually adding wins to their to their now official predictions. Uh, I'm gonna have mine out Monday, the week of Cincinnati. I don't want to give anything away. My two early was nine and three. Have I changed that? I think I have. Is it good or bad or, or plus or minus? You'll just have to tune in and find out on Monday, probably with Tuss Talk with Ty. But, yeah, the receiving room has been very consistent throughout fall camp. Very cool to hear that. Uh, it's almost like somebody had a conversation with those boys and said, uh, we got a high NFL draft choice leaving. So somebody's got to step up. And they all said, well, I'm going to be the guy. Yeah. All right. Well, let's stay on the offensive side and the continuing saga of Malik Hornsby and the QB two position. Yeah, this has been a roller coaster ride for Malik. You know, again, I think a big part of the reason why they wanted to move him out to wide out was because of the questions at wide receiver. Last year, you had some of these names I mentioned. They were here a year ago. Katron Jackson, who I haven't – I don't know if he's having – I'm not going to say he's having a bad camp. He's just kind of been lost in that mix, and yet I think they still expect him to be one of the one of the four guys. But Katron Jackson, Warren Thompson, these were guys that were here a year ago. Trey Knox, who they end up moving to tight end. None of these guys you know, had a big splash. So I think what they wanted to do – Let's let's – why not? This guy that might be the fastest player on our team who has ridiculous speed, who takes up 10 yards in a flash – uh, and maybe we can run some set trick plays with. And Malik Hornsby, let's move him out to wide receiver. I truly do believe they were trying to transition him from quarterback, from QB two to wide receiver. I do think they were, I think they were going beyond set plays. I think that was honestly their goal. But then the wide receivers have had, like, like I just said, they've had a great camp. Now. They, they've slowly started to kind of move him back to quarterback. Well, now the vibe that I'm getting is that there's a legitimate battle between he and, and Fortin, the uh, transfer, who's been at like 15 schools who, who transferred in. They like him a lot, and Sam Pittman even said that at one point he said, well, one of the reasons why we like moving Malik Hornsby out to wide receiver is because of what Fortin has done. But now they're in this situation where, well, wait a minute, our wideouts are having a fantastic camp. We don't need him out there, and we don't want to risk injuring him. So you just assume, oh, well, he's going to go back to QB2 and be fine. No, there's a real battle going on there, and I, I don't know that they're willing to come out and say that. If he has said that, I might have missed it. I, he has admitted that, talking about uh, Sam Pittman, he has admitted that Fortin has taken a, a pretty significant step forward and uh, has, been, has had a really solid camp as well. And I've seen him toss the ball. He has – the quickest release I've seen from an Arkansas quarterback. I don't know since when he has a very fast release. He looks like he makes really good reads in a timely fashion. I've also seen him kind of hold on to the ball and stutter and move around. And, and uh, that's against the twos and threes. So who knows how he would perform consistently against the ones. I don't know. KJ's had, by the way, a really strong camp as well with the highest pass completion percentage. So there's definitely no battle there, but the QB two spot, is up. It seems to me like it's up for grabs. And I, I do think if, let's say they manage, I don't want to use the injury scenario. We'll go the uh, we'll go the opposite direction. Let's say they manage to just beat the crap out of Cincinnati and late in the fourth quarter, it's, you know, I don't know, 39 to three. And they, they're like, all right, these final two drives, let's bring in a backup. I do think that would be Hornsby. But at the moment, that that could change. I really, I, it could change. We're going to know a lot more. Uh, probably this time next week about what's going on with that with the QB two spot, but it does seem to be a pretty tough battle for Malik Cornsby. Got Ty Hudson on the line from Hogville.net. We always enjoy the conversation with Ty breaking down the Hogs. You can go on over and check out uh, Ty's work on Hogville.net, and you're telling us Hogville all in caps right here on YouTube as well. So it's Hogville and then all in caps net. Just hog. If you just look up Hogville, I'm sure it pulls up. I took it over in June, started pumping out content. I want to say late June, mid to late June. I, when I took it over, it had like 80 subscribers. We're now pushing almost 800 subscribers. 
Wow. Uh, it's pushing and it's growing and it's been a lot of fun. I'm interviewing Otis Kirk. I've had Kevin McPherson on who covers basketball. Dudley Dawson, who rarely shows his face, by the way. Uh, we got him on and and they've all done it. It's They make what I do as someone who interviews makes my job a lot easier. And it's nice to have people who keep the conversation flowing like they're able to do. Um and it's it's been a treat working with them. I'm I'm like I told you before, I got the shirt. It's official. I've got the badge of honor, the Hogville the Club. Club. Right there it is. There's the badge of honor. But no, it's it's been a lot of fun. But yeah, Hogville, I'm 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 there on YouTube, but I'm I'm still with Tuss Talk with Ty. I'm still doing that, managing managing both of those. My my badge of shame right now is having this white blob over my shoulder. I'm sure Arkansas fans don't like to see that. And I told Ty this before. I'm sure everybody's having a love-hate relationship with this video right now because they love Ty's analysis, but they hate looking at me and seeing this over their shoulder. But, you know, then I got Texas saying, I, and I'm sure nobody's too happy about that. So if you flip neutral. If you flip that Texas – helmet upside down if you could somehow get it to flip upside down they would love you for that oh there you go yeah that's beautiful now you might you might tick off your texas crowd but who cares about them mark yeah we're not going to post this on the texas channel but word gets around when i say something on one channel it always circulates and people say mark said this over here and i okay well i'll just say it looks a lot better now just thought i'd clear that up (laughs) <laughs> now we can go talk about love hate relationship hudson clark has maybe a hut uh love hate relationship with uh, arkansas fans to a certain extent and he shouldn't with a name as glorious as hudson um listen i think he's done the name quite well you know going from a walk-on earning a scholarship you know earns time with the ones has an incredible game a couple of years ago and then he gets burned on man-to-man coverage. He gets uh, he gets completely burned. He does not have SEC. Hell, he doesn't have, I'll be honest, I don't think he has power five speed. No matter the con, I say power five, God, what does that even look like right now? But he doesn't have that. I'll just stick with the SEC. He doesn't have that SEC cornerback speed. He doesn't have it. I, I, I would be, uh, it'd be disrespectful to guess his 40, but I'll say this, the guy's not running four fours. You know, he's really slow. Otis Kirk, I thought when uh, when I interviewed him last, he made a, he had a good point. He said, man, I wish I wish he had that that day day Bishop De, uh, Bishop uh, Ladarius Bishop speed, who's one of the probably one of the six fastest players on this roster. If he had that, he'd be an all American. And I think he's right. That's the only you know, if you had to check and this is again, some Otis said. I'm stealing this right from Otis. If he had 10 check boxes, he checks nine out of 10. The one thing he doesn't have is speed. You know, he's got great awareness, high IQ. That's something you hear the players say and the coaches say and other media folk say he's got high IQ. He's, 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 I mean, look, he would lead the secondary in fall camp with interceptions. He, he's tied. I think him and Catalan, I think, have four interceptions through fall camp that they've told us about. I know for a fact he had at least one, maybe two more. But they were dropped because they were doing this uh, exercise or this uh, they're doing one on ones wearing these like boxing gloves and he's covering ones and twos receivers and he's making plays on these guys. Now, he did get beat. Warren Thompson and him did a uh, one on one. They had a one on one battle and Warren Thompson broke his ankles. But Warren Thompson does that to everybody. So and that's really about the only time I've truly seen Hudson get embarrassed has he been beaten at other times in camp that the media has seen yeah but also you wonder okay that had to be man coverage anytime he's back in zone if he has help over the top and he's back in zone or even if they're in man coverage as long as he has help and and and, and there's a 50 50 jump ball the odds are he could come down with that ball i mean he's got great hands for a corner again high iq he has he checks so many boxes he just doesn't have he doesn't have the speed to play corner. And I, I've always thought, man, this guy, and you you brought it up before I even said anything, maybe he should try out, maybe he should look at safety. The thing is, they're so deep there, and they feel so good about that spot, and they like what Hudson brings to the table, I guess, and that's why he's still a starter at corner, him and, him and Bishop both, who, if I remember correctly, were also the starters going into last year. Now, Bishop ended up getting beat out, and I think Hudson ended up having to rotate with the uh, with uh with somebody johnson someone but 
Um, there's yeah, fans are kind of split on him. Honestly, maybe not even split. I think I would probably argue that seventy percent of at least hog Twitter pretty vocal about how they just it's a question mark for them. Why is he still starting uh, at corner? And I get it, I get it. And and but we've also seen him. We've also seen him break out. So, and there, and by the way, we only get 25 minutes. You know, we get 25 minutes. That's all they're giving the media. And then it's like, you know, the SID, he's kind of marching you out. And that's his job. And Kyle is great at his job, the SID for uh, Razorback football. And we don't get to see everything. So maybe there's something behind closed doors that we're just not, we're just not seeing. Cincinnati comes a call in here. They were a college football playoff team, probably realistically a top 10 or 12 team in the country more like top 40 i would guess we shall see what luke fickle has this year but uh, i look forward to that game and look forward to talking to ty next week about cincinnati arkansas in fayetteville so we will tease everyone with that in the meantime get on over to hogville.net or hogville right here on youtube awesome ty appreciate you being here always fun mark always look forward to doing these man